Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld adventure in the tropical rainforest with the believers of Boyo. Last time we left off, after an episode that definitely felt a bit like the closing of a chapter, we grabbed the legendary Staff of Sin and equipped the Eltex Staff on Light, Squigs also gave birth to baby Elpis, and we collected enough ideology development points to have the believers of Boyo reform their ideology once more. And that is also what we will start with here today. Thank you all so much for all of the lovely comments on the last episode with all of your ideas for memes and precepts. And I have to admit, I was honestly a bit surprised by the overwhelming support for the blood feeding meme. But to me, that only makes the choice easier. So we are now going to select this one as our ideology's third pillar. Now, arguably the most notable change here is that our colonists will now revere blood feeders, like Light and Vulek. They will also be taking slightly more relaxed stances towards execution, organ use and cannibalism, although I don't think that we will explore any of that too much. Instead, I think it's time that we up the importance of charity even further, which now affects the severity of mood bonuses and penalties, depending on whether or not we show ourselves charitable. In addition then, you can see it here, blood feeders, so sanguophages, are now revered, so from here on out, Light and Vulek will have a particularly high standing in our colony, so high in fact, that people would like to see one of them as our leader. We'll talk a bit more about that at the end of the episode, for now we can also take note of acceptable cannibalism, but again, acceptable does not mean that we have to indulge in it, in this case, I think the tunneler meme with its preference for insect meat and fungus takes priority. Speaking of the Tunneler meme, we will now also add the rather fitting Combat and Darkness precept, which gives us accuracy bonuses to both shooting and melee when it's dark out, but also comes with accuracy penalties in brightly lit environments. And even though the percentages here seem marginal, the way they are calculated can actually have a huge impact, so much so that we might want to switch our entire colony to a night schedule, but for today at least, I think we'll just see how things go. Finally then, we are going to make a change to our pain party ritual, simply because I feel like we are no longer really that interested in recruiting even more people. So let's change the ritual reward here to insect jelly, a reward that is unique to the tunneler meme. And at least for this reform, I think that's all we're going to do here. I have mentioned it before, I am not particularly interested in adding any further relics. Yes, they can be extremely powerful, but acquiring them feels like more of a grind than a real adventure. We will also not add elephants as our venerated animals, at least not yet, but I also think that we will have at least one more ideology reform in our future, so this right here is not quite the final version. Still, it is what the believers of Boyo are looking like at this point, and we do actually have one more believer right here in our prison cell. However, once again, thanks to all of your comments on the last episode, I have made the decision that we're going to release him. The reason for that is he's overall really not all that useful, even with the fast walker trait, a trait that is actually more than negated by a doomsday rocket launcher burn scar on the right leg. So essentially he will not only be a slow learner, but also a slow walker, which leaves the only thing he's got going for him a good shooting skill and the psychically hypersensitive trait, and at least in terms of psycasters, I think we are well equipped at the moment. And so we will now have our primary psycaster light release our prisoner, May he spread the ways of Boyo far and wide. In terms of charity, I think we did more than enough for him. We rescued him, forgave him for attacking us in the first place, patched up his wounds, and even installed a denture to replace a shattered jaw. So I don't really think that you can hold it against us that we did not make him a permanent part of the colony. Now, near the end of the last episode, we also had a small group of traders arrive, and we're doing some business with them here. But we are just selling some of our trade goods, including a few packaged survival meals. Unfortunately, they don't really have anything that would be of interest to us. Just a few seconds later then, an interesting development inside of our base, Vulek and Light, our two sanguophages fighting each other. And unsurprisingly, I think the fight ends in favor of the much more heavily armored Vulek, although both of them take away their fair share of injuries and will now spend a few hours in the hospital. And so, while Dimitri patches them up, a new day begins in the jungle, the first one of the episode, after almost five minutes, and it begins with Kevin using his creativity inspiration to make some art. Considering his overall skill set, I think that might be the best use for the inspiration. Dimitri, meanwhile, earns himself a taming inspiration, and considering his animal handling skill of 14, we might actually be able to use that for something interesting. Perhaps we get lucky and have some more elephants wander in. At the moment though, the map unfortunately does not offer any. And so instead, we begin with another base expansion project. I think it is quite obvious already what this is going to be here. We are digging out a few more bedrooms. Just as we do, we also receive the adorable Snowhair quest, 
Essentially, we need to take care of a paralyzed snow hare for nine days, and we will accept this quest for the honor reward and give that to Kevin. Eventually, I would like to get him up to the rank of Knight 2 for trading with the Empire, and this here might be a small step in the right direction. The snow hare then arrives royally in a shuttle, and so we take it in, feeding it for the next nine days should not be too much trouble. In the meantime, our bedroom expansion continues and Kevin also finishes his sculpture. Eventually, it ends up being of good quality, which is about what I had expected. And in typical Rimworld fashion, it bears an artwork of nine poets and drunkards eating yams together. And a Komodo stands beneath the main subject. And with that work finished, Kevin can then also host the new and improved version of the pain party in the evening. After all, we have a lot to celebrate. The birth of a new baby, the acquisition of a legendary relic, not to mention that Kevin himself can now also count his sister among our colonists. Sadly though, the party is a terrible disappointment. So we get mood penalties all around and no insect jelly. Sounds to me like Kevin will have to do better next time. On the following morning then, our researchers unlock deep drilling. And so the next logical step here would of course be to look into the ground penetrating scanner next. And with the two of them together, we should be able to secure ourselves a steady supply of steel. Our bedroom expansion project then coming along nicely, the bottom three rooms will actually become prison cells. Considering that we are charitable, I think we want to treat our prison as well. Although we are taking some precautions and give the three adjacent rooms to our melee fighters Wyatt, Kyle and Kraleth. In the evening then, our hunter maniac triggers the rage of yet another rhinoceros. And as you can see, this one here gets a little bit too close for comfort. So maniac unfortunately takes a hit before he can get off the stun cast. Luckily, the animal was already pretty heavily injured too, and so it doesn't take us long to take it down. Still, as you can see, maniac here is actually in critical condition, and he will most likely spend more than just a night in the hospital. On the next morning then, we assign the colonist bedrooms inside of the prison ward. Once again, we want to have our most competent melee fighters in here, just in case someone attempts to break out. Later that day then, we have visitors, once again a small group with a few items to trade. And a short while later, they have made it over to our base and we can take a look at their inventory. And once again, not a whole lot going on here, we are exchanging chocolate and survival meals for components and silver. Of course, every little bit helps, but I think the real trading will happen once the next caravan arrives, or once we decide to send out one of our own. And so, another evening slowly rolls around, our prison cells more or less finished at this point. In the late afternoon, Maniac is also finally released again from the hospital, and just a few hours later, he is once again running from the rhinos. At this point, it is also dark outside, so we do get a shooting accuracy bonus. And with our visitors still on the map, we do of course want to make sure that we kill the animal before it reaches them. And so, while we send out our fighters, the ground penetrating scanner is unlocked too. And with that, we now have everything we need to take mineral mining to the next level. Up next then, I would like to quickly unlock gunsmithing, that shouldn't take too long. Because I think that with such a steady supply of chem fuel, it is high time that we unlock mortars. Mostly so that we can start making mortar shells of our own. The rhino is then quickly shot down, as you can see Ellie actually helped on this one. And so another night sets across the jungle and we can skip ahead to the next morning. Admittedly, it is still very early, as Kevin uses his convertibility on Vulik one last time. But finally it succeeds, and Sanguophage Vulik is converted to the Believers of Boyo 2. And with that, all 13 of our colonists are now members of the same ideology. Now, a few hours later, it is time to once again load up the drop pods, this time with Light and Brandon. And, since this is a trading caravan, with as many trade goods as they can carry. None of the trade goods here really out of the ordinary, but we are selling a poor quality marine armor. Now that we have flag vests and good to excellent quality thrombofer dusters, I think we can make the switch. Loading up the parts takes quite some time, which we are then also using to build the ground penetrating scanner. Unfortunately, we have to do so outside since it cannot be placed underneath a roof, but at least that way our colonists get some fresh air once in a while. And with Maniac then hunting another rhinoceros, the transport parts are loaded. Once Light enters his, we are ready for the launch. And once again, we are going to send them over to the Empire. As the two of them arrive, we can begin trade negotiations. And well, immediately you can see that we are moving quite a bit of stuff here. Already included are 120 units of cloth to make more flak vests. Still, that leaves us with plenty of money to spare. And I think this week it's time, let's grab the Deathless and Size Sensitive gene pack here, together with the Archite capsule that will be required to install it. 
Now, you don't need to get your hopes up just yet. We will have to perform quite a bit of research until we can actually install this gene pack on one of our pawns. Until then, it will need to be safely stored because as you can see here, if we don't, it will deteriorate quickly. So let us finally build our very first gene bank, a powered device that we can use to safely store gene packs. The archite capsule, meanwhile, can safely remain in our storage room. As we are then jumping into the afternoon, we can see that Maniac is once again getting into it with a rhinoceros. He does seem to have a knack for picking the closest possible quarters to shoot them, and once again he gets hit before he can get off the stun sidecast. While Maniac is running away, we then also receive another quest, this one an ancient complex raid. I have to say, I am not particularly interested in doing these anymore. Still, it is close by, so we might want to check it out at some point. Maniac's backup then is quick on the scene and thankfully avoids friendly fire. For the killing blow, we send in our two melee specialists, Kyle and Wyatt, and supported by the others, they take another rhino down, no problem. Back in the base, meanwhile, we are switching Took from Ravager Armor to Thrombofer Duster. Even combined with a Flag Vest, the Ravager Armor might technically still be more protective, but it is also the last remnant of the Vanilla Faction's expanded Vikings mod, so once we have sold it, I think we can safely uninstall that, just so we keep the load order as lightweight as possible. The rest of the day then remains uneventful, in the evening gunsmithing is already unlocked, and that means we can now start working on mortars, which will take slightly longer. On the following morning, it is then also time to mine a bit more. Now that we have a ground-penetrating scanner online consuming a steady 700 watts, we need a bit more power, so we're going to construct ourselves another water mill generator. I think we will also be able to squeeze another one in to the left of it, and maybe that's going to be enough for the rest of the series, otherwise we might have to look into different means of power production. Our ground-penetrating scanner meanwhile, currently operated by Maniac with an intellectual skill of 8, we definitely would have better suited candidates for this, most notably Volek, but at least for the moment I would like to have those spend their time researching. As the night then sets in, we use our darkness fueled shooting powers to hunt a few more rhinos, and as you can see, this time we are sending out the entire squad right from the beginning. As expected, the animals go manhunter as soon as the first shot connects, but considering what we have brought to this fight, we shouldn't have too much trouble taking them down. And so it's only a matter of time before three dead rhinos can be hauled back to the kitchen. A fourth one is also still roaming around in the area, but we'll leave that for Maniac to hunt at a later point in time. In the middle of the night then, our small colony of Red Chapel once again comes under threat, this time not by a raid, but by pirates with a toxic spewer machine. And this is something that we definitely want to get rid of as soon as possible. Not only does this have the potential to kill our plants, but it will also harm animals and colonists who spend too much time outside. And so, barely an hour later, after a green mist has already settled over the jungle, we are sending out some drop pods. With Wyatt, Kyle, Light and Took, we are sending out some of our best. The four of them should hopefully be enough to take out eight pirates. Just a few moments later then they arrive, and the pirates begin their counterattack almost immediately. Meanwhile, we have set things up to once again employ the tried and tested skip them where it hurts approach. Together, Wyatt and Kyle are capable of one-hitting basically everything, and we have the skip side cast on both Wyatt and Light, so we're not going to run out of side focus anytime soon. And so the story of this fight is quickly told. As enemy number 6 goes down, the pirates finally decide to flee. And so we can now go to work on the toxic spewer machine to destroy it as quickly as possible, while Took takes a look around the rest of the enemy encampment. And in a sizable bedroom, he discovers a bit of gold and some psychoid leaves. The destruction of the toxic spewer then also drops steel, plasteel and a component. And so we are taking a good haul back home with us, some weaponry, a few utility items, some lamps as well, and we can also take our enemy's food supply, I doubt they will need it for any longer. And despite the travel time being short, we are fast skipping home for this one. If we used the time it would have taken us to travel back home on foot to meditate, then we should be able to raise light side focus back up in no time. Not to mention that having our best melee fighters back home at the colony is a good idea under any circumstances. A short while later then, the green mist has cleared, the fog meanwhile is still hanging around. As you recall, this one is part of a separate quest that we accepted for the Empire, but it should vanish in a few days as well. 
Now, except for our little visit to the pirate encampment, the day remains otherwise uneventful. In the afternoon, we can watch as Squeaks puts up watermill generator number 4, and we also welcome a new elephant to the colony, as Countess Rotona has once again given birth. This one will now be named after patron supporter Keki, and as usual, let me know in the comments down below what kind of royal title she should get. Apart from that, however, not a whole lot happens, and so we can already skip ahead to the next morning. A morning that begins with the arrival of another small group of travelers. We are also starting to bring in our next Nutrifungus harvest, and a short moment later the caravan has made it to our front door. So, let's trade. This time around though, we're just selling some stuff, some pemmican that is about to go bad, as well as some of the loot from the pirate raid. We are going to embark on a proper trading mission shortly, so it's fine with me to just earn a bit of silver here and to not get anything else in return. As we are then waiting for Light to raise his Psy Focus back to far skip levels, we receive another quest, and before we accept this one, I would like to hear what you think about it. Very importantly, this is not a charity quest, so we do not necessarily have to accept it, especially considering that housing a grand total of 9 people for 25 days is a tall order. Then again, I think the way of Boyo dictates that we kind of have to do this, in which case, let me know how you would like to see us handle it and which reward you would go for. Obviously, the honor could be extremely useful to kickstart Kevin's royal career. On the other hand, a legendary quality sniper rifle actually rivals the single shot damage output of a masterwork charge lance, so I would like to hear what you guys think we should do here. In the meantime, Light is ready to go and that means we are sending him and Kevin out on a trade mission. No, this time we are not trading with the Empire, so Kevin is the sensible choice. Instead, we are packing our drop pods full of trade goods for another faction, including two Thrombofur Ravager armors. As you can see here, they will fetch us a pretty penny. It then takes us all afternoon to load up the pods, but in the evening they are ready, and we are sending them over to this village right here, inhabited by our good friends of Anum, who hopefully have plenty of interesting items for us to trade. At the very least, selling all of our inventory earns us almost 5000 silver, so let's begin by acquiring some more Nutriamine as well as another Death Rest Capacity Serum. After all, our Sanguophages are still far away from reaching their full potential. We will also acquire another Doomsday Rocket Launcher just as an emergency option, and as you can see, we could still purchase more, and even though there are a few other interesting items for sale here, I think we'll leave it at that for now. I had actually hoped to be able to acquire another side trainer for the fast skip sidecast, just so we don't always have to send out light with these caravans. After all, his Psy focus should better be spent in combat. And so, as Kevin and Light return back home, another night sets across the tropical rainforest, and at this point we need to briefly talk about colony leadership. With the blood feeding meme, our colonists are now all wishing for a blood feeder master, in other words, a sanguophage to officially lead this colony. At the moment, we only have two of them, Light and Vulik, and once again, I would like to hear what you think we should do here. Should we give one of them the position of colony leader, and if so, should we give it to Light or to Vulik, and should we give it to them permanently, or perhaps with the intention of giving it to someone else down the line? Always keeping in mind that we can make our next Sangophage in about a year, so we are not necessarily limited to these two. So let me know how you think we should proceed here in the comments down below, while we transition over to our weekly dose of fan art, this week entirely submitted by Isaac Young, who sent in four pieces and also wrote a bit about a maniac and his dead mother, as well as about the colony's new happy family. I'll leave those for you to enjoy, and as always, if you want to submit some fan art of your own, feel free to send me an email to pete at petecomplete.com. And with that, I can already say that I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.